I'm sitting here in the conference room of the Xavier University uh, CentOS Center here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Getting ready, doing my final preparations, as you can see, for my upcoming presentation that I'm about to do. What I wish they had told me about the first five years of marriage. I'm going to write the book again. I think I would write it as, I would retitle it and say, How I Wish They Had Talked to Me About the First Five Years of Marriage. Um, because I, I don't know that I got a lot of bad information. I think I got a lot, Mindy and I got a lot of information that we didn't need and there was no way we were going to remember it because we didn't have any hooks to hang it on. But what I remember most um, about people telling me during the first five years um, or right before we got married was how they told it to me, which very often was patronizing. And the way I, I sum, sum up my memory of how folks talked to me when I was preparing for marriage was I'm older, I'm experienced, I've been married a long time, I know everything. You're young, you're inexperienced, you haven't been married, um, and you know nothing. So shut up, close your mouth, and sit down and listen to me while I tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> and there may have been a time when that worked, but that day is no longer here. <laughs> Not only for my generation, if we think that that didn't work with postmoderns and Gen Xers, and it didn't, um, it's going to work even less, and it's going to backfire with millennials and then the upcoming generation texters. So the, I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make and what I really want to leave the audience with today is that as we talk to young people, as we talk to young couples, um, especially generation Xers on down, from 35 on down, about marriage, whether they're couples who are preparing for our marriage prep programs or couples who are preparing for marriage, that we talk to them in a way that is not condescending and not patronizing, as if they know nothing, um, as if we've learned through all the mistakes and just by us running our yaps and telling them what our mistakes were, we're going to somehow magically prevent them from making mistakes, which is not possible. Information alone does not, uh, does not a great marriage make. <laughs> Much more, what's much more needed is a bond and a relationship so that couples can know that they have someone to rely on when things get tough. Because in the heat of an argument, information is not very convincing to make you want to swallow your pride and your ego and apologize and sit down and listen, even when you think you're completely right. So I think we need to get out of information mode and move heavily, heavily, heavily into relationship mode um, non-patronizing, non-condescending, reverencing the story that these couples bring to us. They bring to us a unique story. And again, this doesn't mean we need to usher them to the altar. We do need to, we can affirm them, encourage them, and challenge them in the context of listening to their story and getting to know who they are and being in relationship with them. Is that easy? Absolutely not. I don't pretend that it is. Will it work? Yes. Is it the only thing that I think that's going to work with the upcoming generations? Absolutely.